Get in. Gonna go for free out of free for twenty quid. I mean, come on. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here. The voice of hardcore boxing. And I've got a special guest on the phone today with me, my good friend Dale Nichols at Dale the Great X on Twitter. How are you doing, Dale? Yes, mate. I'm all good, yeah. Good. Right. Straight in. No messing about. Baturbia against Gavosdijk. What do you think, Dale? So I think it was a high quality contest. Baturbia definitely came on strong. I only gave Gavosdijk two rounds leading up the stoppage and uh, I'll just think that Baturbiev is the man at the weight. Yeah, the guy is a beast. As you know, he's my favourite fighter after Josh Whale at the moment in boxing. And uh, I've tipped him for years uh, to do well. He's 15 and 0, 15 iced. I mean, this guy, right? I mentioned it in a video the other day, but they don't seem to be going out as quick as what they should. But I did mention that this gentleman, Mr. Arto Baturbia, age 34, lifted Bob Ashesafe off the floor with 16 ounce gloves on. And Bob Ashesafe were going back and telling, uh, the, you know, the old guy with white hair who was always in the ring with Kel Brook and Dominic, that uh, he was got the Peugeot dealership in Rotherham. Well, he was telling me, right, let me tell you this, in sauna up at Ellaby Hall, he was saying that he's one of the most powerful people in world boxing, and Bob Ashesafe had told him that he'd never, he'd never been hit like that in his life. Are you with me? He said it, he said it, 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 it was frightening, the power, you know, that baturbia has got. He said it was just f scary. You know, and, and he, he carries himself with menace. He even walks with menace, doesn't he? You just look at him and you think he's hard, don't you? You wouldn't want to meet him in a dark alley. Oh, no, would you, Eggman? You'd, uh... But, no, and, uh, what, what do you think about Callum Smith moving up to 175 and fighting any of them bogeymen? What do you think? I think he'd get absolutely bounced around the ring by Baturbiev. Yeah, dear. I think Bivol had put him to sleep as well. Dear. What about uh, the other guys at that way? Brent Ramirez, 40 and 0. Um, oh, oh, that'd be a good fight, that, 
actually. It'd be, it'd be, that would be a good fight. But it definitely wouldn't beat Bivol or Baturbiev. But I think it'd be, it'd be a very good fight against Ramirez. Dear. Yeah, I think te- Gallantrick technically is a very... He's a very good fighter. Um, but he just hasn't got the resume to back it up, has he? Yeah. Yeah, now he hasn't. I mean, who's Callum Smith's best three wins? Groves, Fielding, and... And Dab. Rebrass. Hassan and Dam or Rebrass. What do you and reckon? Dab's shot to pieces, though, isn't it? Yeah, Rebrass wants shot to pieces, and he's at least he's his same weight, and he couldn't get Rebrass out there, could he, Callum? No, no, he, I think he dropped him in the last round, but now that went to points, didn't it? Do you now believe the story that I, I put out ages ago that Joe Gallagher, when asked by a friend of mine about Callum being six foot three and a half and making 12 stone, a friend of mine said, Joe, what about moving him up to 175? He's bound to be a 175er down the line. Joe Gallagher's exact words were, listen, 168's red hot at the moment, but... In a couple of years, 175 is going to be the division. I don't want him any, anywhere near them bogeymen at 175. Now, do people believe me, Dale? Do people believe in the Porkster now? Listen, listen, Rod. Do you remember when Callum Smith voiced Rocky Field in one round? What Eddie Hearn said in the ring after on the Sky interview. Do you remember what he said? Yeah, didn't he say that he was going to be some pound for pound star and all that? He, he said, he said, Callum Smith. He said he's got freakish power. He's a freak of nature, and he can go all through the weights to heavyweight. That was it. That was it. So Eddie Hearn said Callum Smith, a twelve stone super middle, was going to go all the way to heavyweight. That's exactly what he said four year ago. And it's on YouTube, you can find it. And what's happened since, he's still killing his Centimec 168, isn't he? He waited for George Groves to get injured and grow old, and yeah. then went life and death with him for six rounds. George Groves are winning! And since then, who's he fought? He's fought a kickboxer who were undefeated. Scogland. And who else? Who else? Groves, isn't it? And then he fought this year, and Dam, and John Ryder. John Ryder, John Ryder might give him nightmares, you know. If he goes for the body, he might. Yeah, if he gets inside John Ryder. But I, I'm I'm worried at the moment about boxing at the moment. Uh, so we, we've covered Baturbian against Gavosdyk. Would Gavosdyk beat Callum Smith? Well, they've both got the similar sort of resume, ain't they? They've only got one decent win on the record against shot to pieces old old men. Yeah. Would uh, Baturbia beat Callum Smith? 100%. Yeah. Would Bivol? 100%. Kovalev? No. Kovalev don't beat him. What about Anthony Yard, Callum Smith? I'd favour Callum Smith on experience. Well, give it a year, give it a year, we'll see where Yard is. What about Canelo? They'll take that because they're going to get paid, aren't they? <laughs> Canelo batters him. What about Callum Smith fighting at Anfield, Dale? What do you think to that? Well, it's never going to happen, is it? I mean, he doesn't even sell out the Echo Arena, which is only, what, 9,500? Yeah. There's still tickets available for the John Ryder fight. Yeah. Are you telling me he's going to do 50,000 at Anfield? No. No, they're not going to do Anfield. What, Callum Smith? Think, think about it, right? Think about the fighters who have made that jump into stadium fights, right? The only two that spring out in recent times on Sky have been Anthony Joshua, who was already selling out the O2 and doing pay-per-view big numbers, and Kel Brook, who did one off at Bramall Lane, which did about 23,000, but he'd already headlined a couple of pay-per-views himself, hadn't he, before that? Yeah. Which, you know, Gavin and Golovkin. Yeah. And Sheffield, you know, he's got a massive fan base there. Spence. Spence, Gavin and Golovkin, he's had. But, other than that, the only other two fighters are Warrington and Frampton, who aren't any fighters. 
Yeah. Tom, yeah. Is, he, is Callum Smith Augustson gonna gonna go in look, if he was able to sell out Anfield, they'd have done it this year. Get up, Rocky. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Uh, I'm worried about Callum Smith now because Tesco, right, Tesco Joe, the dog shagger, was running about making himself busy with other promoters. I know that because we know a promoter in America who knows him. And they were putting themselves about. Now, when you're doing that, I don't think that that's going to go, go, go down well with uh, Eduardo, do you? Well, now that Eddie signed Billy Joe, and that's why, really, they've got no excuse to not take it. So maybe that's the reasoning for why they're looking to move move around a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's an because, interesting... Because Joe, as much as I hate to say it, I think Saunders beats him. Do you? I think it'd be too slick for him. Yeah, I do as well, you know. I do. And I think Billy Joe knows this, and I think that's why he, he's jumped ship to make this fight, because I think he knows he's got his number. Who's Billy Joe Saunders' best three wins, though, uh, Dale? What do you reckon to that? Well, domestically, you cannot take away what he achieved. He, he, he absolutely hosed up. He moves on to European level and won that against Blondemore, who, who, who was a good European level operator at the time. Yeah. Um, and then he moves up to world level and he beat Andy Lee for the title. Oh, we're like middleweight, though, wasn't he? He was a bona fide champion. He, 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 he got the belt. Um, he beat oh no he, he beat Korobov didn't he for a vacant belt but at the time uh, everyone was avoiding that Korobov weren't they so he yeah. beat a genuine contender to win the belt Billy Joe beat him he was a bona fide world champion but since then he's, he, he's had some absolute shocking defences you'd have to say his best three wins are Andy Lee Lemieux U, Eubank and Lemieux Lemieux yeah, and two of them are world champions, stroke three if you count the IBO with Eubank. Because he beat Abraham, didn't he, as well, Eubank? Yeah, I mean, he, he's probably one of the biggest disappointments in the, in the past three to four years in British boxing, is Eubank. I mean, his profile's humongous. He's, you know, ability-wise, he's got it to win a world title, I think. He's good enough to win a world title. I do really believe that. But, for me, he's a middleweight. Yeah, Frotch says that you, Chris Eubank Jr. is real deal. I think, with a, with a proper trainer, it could be anything he wants to be. Yeah. I think that as well. Because he's certainly got the work ethic. Yeah, has he got, is it the silk pyjama syndrome though, Dale, now that he's got the McLaren and the seafront house in Brighton and all that, is it the, is it the silk pyjama job? Oh, well, let's see who he fights next, because, you know, he should have, he should have been kicking on after the DeGale win, he picked the bones there, and he should have been kicking on and fighting, probably for a world title actually, off the back of that. Yeah, it's uh, exciting times ahead. Exciting times ahead. Right, then mo moving on from from them shit houses. Then, uh, what do you think about the Tyson Fury situation at the moment, Dale? Well, I think we went over this a few weeks ago. It's a fiasco. It's a circus. It's taking the piss out of the fans. The guy who won one more title fight in his career. His best win. Since he beat Vladimir, it's Francesco Pianetta. He's now doing a WWE circus show against a former weightlifter, and he's going for Christmas number one with Robbie Williams. What is going on? Yeah, it's not looking too good for Tyson, is it? He's a fighting man. He's not fighting anybody. Well, he needs to fucking get himself back in the fucking circus because this, this, this man's just a clay from today. He cannot stay at the limelight. All this lies about mental health it's all a load of bollocks that you know that mental health it's a load of shit when 
whenever you watch him in interviews and he starts talking about it, he cannot pinpoint to um, any sort of, anything that's actually happened in his life or anything that he's actually done you know, for mental health or anything like that because it's all a load of shit. Mental health only came into it when drug testing people were on the case, wasn't it? Exactly. Nobody dare say a fucking word though in boxing industry, I've noticed. It's left to people like us, we are, we're this hard hitting channel that fucking we've got because people, they say, oh fucking hell, that's a bit harsh porky, that's what are you on about? Well, don't, you don't, don't Dennis tell you off because he'll want to work with them people that don't lie. I said, I don't give a fuck what Dennis says. He does tell me. When I said, Den, it's my channel. You don't get involved with it. I don't get involved with the final decisions on boxing with Dennis. Yeah, we all sit down and have team meetings, but the final decision is left with Dennis. And it's the same with my channel. I'll take my my chances were what I say on this channel if anybody's got a problem come see me that's what I say because what are we supposed to do not say anything eh are we going to be like sporting icons eh turning up at that Newcastle show the other day totally rimming people there did you see that 50 minute interview we did with Johnny Nelson fucking hell well, he was hanging out of the back of his ass. <laughs> Oh, I can't, I've had to block sporting icons. People asking me why I've not had sporting icons on my channel. Listen, he is a boxing man, I'll give him his jewels, but I don't have people on my channel that hang out of the back of people's arseholes at Sky. Alright, so sporting, I know you're listening, get to fuck. If you got a problem, come see me. Come from behind your camera and come see me, or I'll come and see you at next Sky show at Newcastle, you prick. But, I'm saving your content as well. Hey? I'm nicking your content. I'm nicking my content, putting videos out about fucking pay per view. Fucking couple of days after me and you did that pay per view one, we all that research you did, Dale. Fucking pricks. Because they, cause they feel like they need to get a video out. Fucking cocksuckers. But no, at the end of the day, this is how I look at it, right? If people have got a problem with this channel, Come see me. We are boxing truthers. We tell the truth. Right? We're not going to sit here tickling our souls. Right? For example, Tyson Fury is fighting nobody. He's got to be pulled up on it. You can't go around saying you're the lineal champion of the fucking world when you vacated or got drug bans and retired. Whatever it were, you can't just come back and say you're lineal fighting loads of shit. Bum city. Bare bums in shower. You can't do that. You've got to fight proper people. Now, well, so you have to, is it at the end of the day, right? Tyson Fury, fraud, acting like a claim. Billion White. Yes, One world title we, win. We believe Billion White is serving a solid of bad. Yeah. Eddie Earn, massive hypocrite, put a tweet out today saying best card of the year about this weekend's pay per view when the headline fight isn't even his promotion. Well, what? Any bullshit that we see here, Tony Bellevue, two to three world titles, yeah. they all will point it out. It's not just Tyson we've yeah. got to be targeting here. Yeah. Well, what about uh, Spong failing a drug test with Usyk? It's different rules, isn't it? You know, there's no big books on the, on the line there. He's got the A-side fight who are about to fight on a pay-per-view, is he? So they can afford to push him to the side. Whereas when it was Dillian White, it was, we'll play the rule book here and see how we can get away with it just to get our show on, to get all, so we can all get paid. Yeah, but what about Dillian White's B-side? It's four months now, where's his B-sample? B-side, B-sample, I mean. He's serving a band. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think, yeah. Yeah, there's something going on in there. I mean, if we hadn't have heard about it off Thomas Hauser, they'd have been saying Dillian White's injured, wouldn't they? And all this about solicitors dealing with, I don't believe any of it. Me, I think it's a load of knackers. Why are you going to put... Hey? Paid them off. They've paid Rebus off on his team. Do you reckon? They're serving a ban in silence. Do you reckon they've paid them off? Well, yeah, of course they are. With Dylan White, if he was innocent, 
innocent. He'd be on every TV screaming, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. Wild away you are, I'm mandatory. Wild away you are, you don't hear none of it. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, it's all gone quiet, isn't it? What about his brother? What do we think to him, Dale? Is it his brother? <laughs> oh, baby ting. I know you're listening. How are you doing, mate? Come see me. <laughs> oh, baby ting. <laughs> he got about ten aliases. You've got to give him his credit, haven't you? You've got to respect the hustle. So yeah. Sponges in boxing. The Ambrose Mendy type. People who people who attach themselves to people who have got a rising profile and a rising stock to try and get a little bit of money out of the situation, like Sam Jones for Joe Jones. Fucking hell, Sam Jones. What's his fucking story? Him, what do uh, you reckon to him? Like the theme, there's like as guitar for uh, Tyson. All these people that haven't been there from the beginning. And, of course, Darren Barker with Dave Allen. Fucking Darren Barker, another sponging bastard. What do you think to him? Getting involved in Frank Warren's business with White Rhino. What's happening there, Dale? Well, they're all after one last payday, ain't they? They're going to fucking wheel Dave Allen out for one last time. One last good idea. And then they're going to be fucking nailing his carcass to the fucking... <laughs> Dave Allen thinks they're his best mates at match room. He won't go. He won't go around with the bar. I know. Dave will just sit down, won't he, at end of round one and quit. Take his money and go. He'll have money on his cell to get beat, Dave. Darren Barker did in Germany. Darren Barker in Germany. didn't even do road work for the fight. He just turned up medway, come out swingers, and uh, folded like a stamp. Fucking disgusting. It is. Uh, and what about Dan and Barker with Lee Purdy? Didn't Dan get lynched for going to Germany with a little bit of an injury? And what, to his tongue? Oh, you shouldn't have fucking all these fans opposed to hundreds of pounds. But because Barker's got a bit of a fucking sob story behind him, he's yeah. fucking immune to it. I don't think so. Great story. It's like Dave Allen. It's like the Dave Allen depression, gambling, and going to blow his brains out and all that fucking walking around in. Listen. Dave Do Allen's that. Doing half an hour with Coogan on the set eight, talking about his fucking gambling addiction. What just, a load just, of bollocks. Just to fucking get a bit of a profile. Yeah, well, you've got to understand that Dave doesn't like training, so if he can get all these gimps on Twitter to follow him, plus to get all his mates to run 20 accounts, he's not bothered to see <laughs> he's going in it in. Good luck to him, I say, as long as he's screwed the system. But I don't agree with it. But I'm looking at it from his point of view. If he can get money out of Eddie Earn, why not? But it's screwing boxing fans because Dave knows he can't beat Dubois, doesn't he? All right. Now, if he can get some free publicity off her of old fish eyes, and if fish eyes are stupid enough to VIP uh, Dave and his mates at a show, fucking more for him, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? But... I think that if he'd have fought Dubois or signed for the fight, Eddie would have pulled him out with a week to go just to piss him off. Do you know what I mean? He said, he said he's really going to let Dave go over there and fight Listen, Dave Allen's not got a contract with Matchroom, has he? Right, he let him fight Yoka, didn't he? Eddie got him a fight with Yoka, didn't he? He was on Dennis Hobson's show last... Yeah, but this is his main rival. Of course he's gonna do but who knows he might have pulled him out i mean i thought that but i never really thought that dave had any intention of uh a fighting to bar me i think unless it were mega money and eddie Earn and barker we're gonna get their cuts out of it do you know what i mean that's how i look at it but it is what it is isn't it we're talking about dave allen here the man that's never won a fucking uh He's not won an area belt. He's not won an area title, has he? I mean, but he's funny on Twitter. What the fuck's all that about? If you can get a few quid out of job, get a few quid out of job, but fucking hell. I feel sorry for Dave now because it looks like people are giving him loads of stick, doesn't it? Um, it, it, it? How many more scripts can they write around Dave now? I mean, we've had everything, haven't we? <laughs> 
changes me. But that that man that man's mental health state or his body condition, he can't be anywhere near as healthy as me. He's scrambling his words out already. Yeah, he's dribbling a bit, isn't he? At the moment, he's dribbling, isn't he? But like Rhino, look at that! I've never seen a flatter fucking nose. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, but Dave's not into birds, is he? So he's not. He, he's not bothered about his looks. But moving on from the white rhino, of course, pff, I don't even know why we're giving him airtime, mate. He's lost plot, but I wish him well. Right, the the. Uh, we know about Darren Barker faking it in Germany. We spoke about him. He, he's like going to be... What? Look, Dave Allen needs Darren Barker at the moment because he's got his leg in with Matchroom all the time then, hasn't he? So he's going to stay close to Barker. Dave's playing the game, isn't he? He's playing the game. He's learnt off everybody, hasn't he? Dennis Hobson, Steffi Ball, Peter Fury, Mick Marsden. Dave Allen's playing the game and good luck to him, really. Good luck to him, but... He swerves me when he sees me and he knows fucking why. But this is how I look at it. Darren Barker's a shit house, right? Utter shit house. We know about his fight in Germany and we know what happened with Lee Purdy, where they had him sat in a fucking sauna with Barry Hearn, so that's how much fucking power Barker's got at Matchroom. He's a shit house. What about the Tyson Fury situation? He's not fighting anybody. Who's Tyson Fury's best three wins? Vladimir, Chisora, and Cunningham. And that's it. Who's his top five wins? Who would you add to them three? Oh. Aimer and the second Chisora fight. Yeah. And that's basically it. So that's that's the situation of the heavyweights at the moment. Totally and utterly shocking. How many world title wins has Tyson Fury got? One. So all you Fury Power gimps that are listening, Fury Power! Fury Power! Fucking power court. Right, that's de that's that dealt. We let him piss off the WWE. People need to fucking kneel before me. All them people that said I'm a hater for saying Tyson Fury won't fight Wilder February 22nd. Fucking kneel before the porkster pricks. Gimp squad. Fury Power! Fuck off. Right, that's that dealt with. Right, the matchroom shower of shit at the weekend. Uh, Bean, Macklin, Nelson, all the rest of them. Right, who is the company man now at Sky? Now, Barney Francis is uh, not about in the boxing department. Who are the company men in, 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 the, in the Sky fucking commentary box now? Who are company men? Let's hear it. Go on then. Froch has got to be at bottom, man, because he's he, he's he's uh, he's not a company man. I don't think so. You think so, don't you? I don't. I, I, I do because I think his scorecards are pretty shit. Do um, you? But we'll go, we'll go right. Okay. I'd probably put Spencer Oliver. Spence fucking jug ears. What is the man that pushed the KSI fight? Spencer, Spencer Oliver. Fucking jug ears. Go on. Uh, then look, I think he's pounded down a little bit over the time. He's a bit of a puppet, puppet now. I'd probably say Johnny Nelson next. Or would you say he's next to Bean? Hell yeah. What about Macklin? Ma Macklin's second behind Barker. Who would, you, who would you say is the biggest Sky Sports arse licker in that commentary box after Adam Smith? Macklin, so you put Bean at one, Macklin two, who would you put at three? Barker. Barker at three, who's biggest matchroom arse licker? Tony Bellion. Who's second, Barker? It's got to be me, it's got to be. Yeah. You know the thing is for Bellion, Bellion never, ever, ever references anybody outside of matchroom boxing. No, he doesn't, does he? No, he doesn't, does he? Yeah, Tony Bellio, the disappearing man who's got an evening with on 12th of January in Liverpool. <laughs> the disappearing man. The disappearing man, man who, who, who was on fucking Soccer AM. 
Soccer, I am. Yeah. You don't like Tony Bell, you do you? I think he's the biggest fraud this country has ever seen in British boxing. I'm not, then so I'm not allowed to say what about him because he rates him. I goes, you fucking what? He goes, I rate Tony Bell, you Ross. I goes, fuck. British Commonwealth European yeah. world champion, all vacant. Yeah. snookered mate already Good. I'm on the yellow but I'm snookered by the blue as you can see so just so you can see now blue cue ball they're all flat to the uh, to the cushion I'm gonna call this shot the Paul Massey May you rest in peace. There you go. How's about that for a shot? So that's a Paul Massey shot. Alright, very hard shot to do. You need a very good tip to do that shot. Uh, Alright, I hope you're enjoying the videos. So. Queuing fantastic today, I am queuing unbelievable. Right, and as you can see, I'm on the pink, I'm snookered behind the black. So I'm going to do what we call in the industry, I'm saying that like I'm a professional and I'm not, but what we call this shot is a Massé shot, but I call it a Paul Massé shot. All right, he's from Manchester, he was shot dead a few years ago, may he rest in peace. All right. There you go, I'll do that for a shot. Macabre, Tony Bellew's best win. Yep. How many world title wins has Tony Bellew got? Two. Two. Macabre and Flores. Fucking hell, BJ Flores. Fuck. Blowjob Flores. <laughs> Blowjob Flores and, and Macabre. Who turned up? BJ Flores, who turned up without even a fucking sponsor. He got, he got a short set the fucking. Yeah, how many uh, world title, how many world champions uh, wins, how many wins over world champions has Bell you got? Oh, so let's go then, he's got two against Ty. And one against Cleverly. Three. Uh, that's your lot. And it was a split decision against Cleverly, uh, and he beat us, uh, uh, glued together day to day. Glued together, no, held together by a solid tape. <laughs> Did Steffi Ball throw? Did cost cutter? Did Steffi Ball throw the Amir Khan fight? Just like Barker threw the fight. <laughs> just like Nicky Cook threw the fight against Ricky Burns. Did Steffi Ball throw the Amir Khan fight and put money on his son to get iced? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. We'll leave that to fans to decide. Did Barker put money on himself to get iced against uh, Sturm? 
<laughs> they probably didn't pick around, but they just put down fucking uh, Karn and Sturm to win by stoppage. Fucking hell. Boxing's a fucking shower of shit, isn't it? A shower of shit. You, you know, you, you talk about Liverpool and the fighting men, the fighting CT. It's a great fight, CT. You know, you've got the Smiths who are 3-12 and 12 against world champions. Paul, who's best wins to fucking Dodson. Um, Beefy Smith, who's never beat a world champion. Fucking... Tony Bellew is two and three world title fights. Callum so Smith's like, beat three world champions though, aren't he? We, yeah, we spoke about Callum. I mean, he, he, you know, but even even still, I mean, the, look at two of the three world champions who he's fucking beat. Rocky Fielding, who at the time was at British level and he only won a regular And And the other one's fucking and dumb. Middleweight, an old man. And an injured George Groves. And he's fighting John Ryder next to Fielding's beat. <laughs> and, and Smith beat Fielding by KO in one round. That's unbelievable. Really? That's unbelievable. <laughs> I know. Well, what about Macklin? He should have been a world champion. He got robbed against Sturm, didn't he? Matthew Macklin. Uh, I thought he got robbed against Sturm, me. I thought he won, but it wasn't clear cut, was he? Did he rip the belt off? Well, no, he didn't like, but I know you have to rip it away from away from a minute away from home. But Tyson Fury didn't rip the belt off Vladimir, did he? He picked, he picked, he picked his pocket, That's didn't he? I, I, I do agree with that. He picked All his pocket. Like, you know, when you got Frank Walrus, who turned around and said, "Oh, we didn't win a second. He took him to school." I don't think he did, Frank, because one of the scorecards actually had it one sixteen, one thirteen, didn't that? Yeah, I had him beating Vladimir, but it were closer than what they all made out. They were all talking like he took him to university, but I didn't I didn't have it like that. I didn't see it like that. But he did beat Vladimir, but I thought Macklin won by a couple of rounds against him, and I thought he was pretty clear cut. And I had my, I had Macklin in my accumulator, and, and people keep digging me out, saying, oh, you always have a dig at Tony Bellew because you lost four accumulators. Tony Bellew cost me over £8,000 in four accumulators because I backed against him. And on these accumulators, he was the one who, who, were the, who fucked up on my bets. But no, I just tell it straight. Bellew made a big thing on, on Sky Sports Toe to Toe about cleverly not beating a champion. But he's not beat a champion, has he? When Tony Bellew rests his head on that pillar at night, right, in his big house with all his properties, he knows he's had four pay-per-views, but he's not beat a world champion or a champion at any level throughout his career. Yeah, they were an ABA champion, but ABA champion, you don't fight the champion, do they? Do you? Tony Bellew has not beat a champion in his career, amateur and professional. Now, he has to live with that. The same as Andre Ward has to live with it. Not coming to fight the Cobra in Nottingham. He has to live with that, even though it'd be an hard fight for Carl. Now, Andre Ward has to live with the fact that he didn't fight, he didn't fight Booty or Andre Dirro. And Frotch took their O's, didn't he? Now, Bellew has to live with that fact, you know, that he's a fraud in boxing. He's telling us he's, he, he, he's top at tree, but he ain't, he's a Euro-level guy, isn't he, that got lucky? Like Ricky Burns, these are overachievers. It's like Dave Allen, he's area level, isn't he? Because he hasn't won an area belt. Is he? Is Dave Allen journeyman? No, he's better than a journeyman. But does he beat Cash Alley, Dave Allen? Cash Alley could have beat Price, couldn't he? Dave never won a minute against Price. Now, Cash Alley is in a different mindset now. It's same age as Dave Allen. Does Cash Alley beat Dave Allen? It's a 50-50 fight, isn't it? Not that Cash Alley, just on the fact that he's fresher. Yeah, so you'd have to put Richard Towers' fight to Cash Alley against Dave Allen. You'd back Cash Alley, wouldn't you? But Cash has not got the profile, has he? Dave Allen's funny on Twitter and he's got all his mates running under the counts, hasn't he? So, on Twitter, so... You'd have to back Cash Alley against Dave Allen on... Not an experience on being fresh, wouldn't you? But this is how boxing's going at the moment, isn't it? If you're funny on Twitter... You're entitled to paydays. You've got the profile. Does Dave Allen sell a ticket on a small old show? You tell me. 
No, he doesn't. Does he sell them on a pay-per-view show? Yeah. Why didn't he fight in Newcastle? Because the money offered to him when I heard were poor. But he's got to build his send back up. And he's saying, no, no, I don't have to build my send up. I'm Dave Allen. Well, take a rest from the sport and come back again. I mean, you know, I always think back to the, the Davey Price fight and I think, you know what, is it the best thing that ever happened to him, him being beaten in that fight? Because oh, to Dave he's Allen? If he'd have gone in there with Pavetkin, my God. Yeah, but if he'd have gone in with Pavetkin, right, Dave Allen were going to set a, a foundation up in Doncaster, the David Allen Foundation for us. Well, that's what, that's what we were telling people. I mean, oh, is that just waffle that people say when the when they say it's not about money? Then they're asking for hundreds of thousands. Do they just say it's for my foundation? A bit like Fury. Oh, I'll give that seven million to charity. When Coog when Coogan asked Tyson about it, he said, "None of your business. What I do with my money?" So is that just waffle and being pulled up on your lies? Because once you tell a lie, you got to tell another, aren't you? Which brings me to a massive story and a tweet I've put out that's pinned on my timeline on Twitter. If you go to my Twitter, at Corner Porky, give me a follow, have a look at my pinned tweet. It says, Eddie Hearn is down as an amateur fighter, 4-0 at heavyweight in the amateurs, down as Eddie Hills. There are no records whatsoever of Eddie Hills being a fighter in amateur. Now, Eddie Hearn says, No, oh, it's true, it's true, Cougs. I, call, I were called Eddie Hills. I went 4-0 and oh as an amateur. Eddie Hearn, there is no record of that. So, if there's any fighters out there that fought Eddie Hills, get in touch with my channel, right? And Dennis Hobson's going to give you two tickets to his next show, VIP and After Party, which is... 220 quid for two tickets right also we're going to give you a bag of goodies porky's corner goodies and we'll throw in a few other tickets for another couple of shows because i know that if anybody for eddie earning amateurs they'd have been in newspapers by now selling their story am i right dale you'd have to think so yeah so as far as i'm concerned eddie fucking earn you prick, you're full of shit, you fucking prick. I spent a fucking fortune on them two billboards, you piece of shit, and you still didn't come on the channel. <laughs> but I'm over it now, but I'm not bothered anyway. I should have put them billboards up, actually, when I'd got more a bigger following and I'd been doing it. So I've only been, really been doing it nine months, haven't we, seriously, ten months, since, you know, since January, but I should have done that down the line in a couple of years, shouldn't I? You know, you know, boy, you know what you didn't get on the, the channel, didn't you? Because he knows you'd, you'd have asked her about Stub Up. Stub Up, putting pay per view up. I'd have asked him about the. Well, I know where I'd have liked to have asked him about. Carl Frotch against Julio Cesar Chavez. Why it didn't happen. I know one version what happened, and I believe that to be the truth. But Eddie Earn, the story he's spinning. Uh uh. Uh uh. And I also happen to know somebody very close to me, and he knows Bob Arum's version of events, what happened. So we know Bob Arum's version. I know somebody else who were involved in, who would have been involved in that. So we need Eddie Earn's version because we're not going to get Chevez's. So we know Bob Arum's. We know somebody else's version. Let's hear Eddie Earn's version about why Carl Froch never got his fight after doing a six-week camp, halfway through his camp for Chevez. We need Eddie Earn to come out and tell the truth. That's what we need, don't we, Dale? Instead of spin, the fucking spin doctor, like Adam, Mr. Bean. Bean, runner bean, could have been, should have been, never been, bait bean. Fucking die, bean, die. Sorry about that, Adam Smith. I lose my shit, don't know when people mention Adam Smith. Just tell us where the bodies are. Dot com. Do you know what I mean? Walter fucking Mitty, Eddie Hearn. Walter fucking Mitty. Yeah, yeah, I had four amateur fights, Cougs. As in heavyweight, yeah. Heavyweight, I've always been six foot five. Yeah, heavyweight, wasn't I? Yeah, about 19, 20 year old. Four and I won in amateurs, Cougs. 
4 and 0, whatever you're at. Yeah, you're in Billy Ricky, couple of fights in Billy Ricky, and you know, couple of fights in Essex. We put me sent down as Eddie Hills because we didn't want people saying, oh, he's a Hearn, Barry Hearn's son. What a load of bollocks! Load of bollocks, Pinocchio. Fucking liar, liar. And I've got this prick on here. If you go onto my timeline, somebody's actually commented. One at fo the fourth comment, I fucking blocked him and he said, You're obsessed by Eddie Hearn. Ashley Thomas, he's actually opened a Twitter account to, uh, to uh, comment. Let me tell you this, Mr. Ashley Thomas, on your fake account. You have paid me a big compliment because you've opened a Twitter account to reply to me to defend Eddie Hearn. Or is that Eddie Hearn? Is that you, Eddie? Hey? Liar, 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 eh? I'm a little YouTube channel with 2,000 subs and a 1,000 on Twitter. So why should what I say bother any of you people? We don't buy views, we don't buy subs like all the rest of you fuckers out there. And let me tell you this. We've got software that tells us who is fraud on YouTube, who's a fraudulent fucking channel, and they're all at it, all of them, all of them are fucking fraud, none of them are genuine, there's only me and Ultratech who are fucking genuine, all the rest of them, uh -uh. Uh -uh. none of them mate, fucking frauds, we just stick videos out and that's it, we're not bothered about uh, what we tag in a fuck all. Views don't mean fuck all to us. We are the voice of hardcore boxing fans, aren't we, Dale? We're boxing truthers. Oh, you reckon that sound good? Me Churchill speech. <laughs> well, obviously, you know, we're talking about fucking, well, don't really want to keep going back over on it, but obviously, yeah, you know, you've got... I wonder if I'll be in that. I, 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 I wonder if I'll get a mention about when I fucking used to go down to Peter's gym and hang around. I've done a couple of camps down there and been down a few times. I wonder if I'll get a mention. I very much doubt that. But what can you do? Look, I just I know for a fact, right, that people who I know will be reading that book and. I'll just ask a couple of questions to somebody I know and and I'll get to know if it's a load of bollocks. It'll be knackers, won't it? It'll, listen, knackers sells. Just saying you're depressed doesn't sell. You've got to say, well, we're driving a car at 195 at a bridge and all that. And I haven't lost fucking eight stone. It was 11 stone. Get with program. Listen, when Peter Fury had Tyson, he lost eight stone on several occasions. And that's all he's lost. Eight stone. All this about 11 stone, the fucking legend just keeps growing, doesn't it? It's a myth. One world title win, that's it. Now, is he going to fight Wilder again? No, because Wilder can put your lights out. Is he going to fight Joshua? I'm going to say maybe on that, but he's not going to go near Wilder again. The reason I know that is because he'll sit and he'll know in his darkest moments at night what it took to get through them knock knockdowns off Wilder and he'll be thinking that Wilder will be better prepared next time. So no, it ain't going to happen. Wilder, I know people, right, who are close to Wilder. I'm all, I'll tell you that in your phone, in, on phone after we hang up here on camera, but I know people that are close to Wilder and let me tell you this, Wilder is saying that it's not happening. It's down as happening, but Fury hasn't signed. So all this about I've signed and all this, he has not signed. Wilder's fighting Ortiz a Southpaw, right? Who nobody else has beat except him, an Olympian Southpaw. Nobody wanted to fight Ortiz, did the deal? That's true. That's true. Nobody wanted to fight Ortiz. Nobody wanted to fight Ortiz at all. So, that's basically it, really. And Wilder's fighting him. So, you've got to give Wilder massive, massive respect because nobody else wanted to fight Ortiz. Wilder's only beat one world champion, Stavern. He beat him twice. He's not beat anybody else. But nobody wants to go near him. Fury fought him in the Drew. Ortiz was the WBA interim champion. Right, hang on a second. Here, Rocky. Go on. Go on, out. Go on, scoot. Scoot. 
scooter. Ortiz was the interim champion. Eddie Hearn upgraded Scott Quigg, didn't he, from interim champion? And he fought that guy and Drew, didn't he? It's <laughs> Quigg. Do you remember Scott Quigg holding that belt up after a draw? That was funny, wasn't it? Now it was a draw, but the point I'm trying to make is Eddie Hearn didn't want to get Luis Ortiz upgraded, did he? Because he wanted to get that belt for Vladimir. That's the power that goes on behind the scenes. Now, Luis Ortiz didn't do a ticket and he was just an afterthought. They got him to keep him away from the big Dos of Femi, didn't they? But do you know what, lately, Dale, can I just say this? I'm never going to be a Femi fan because I know what he is. Well, let me tell you this. I know for a fact, right, that Big Doss of Femi didn't want to fight Ortiz. I know because I've heard back of people who were around him at the time. They didn't fancy it. South poor. Well, I might as well just say it, I know. I know if somebody told me that McCracken didn't fancy it, he said, I'm not letting you go near him, dangerous South poor. So there you, there you go. McCracken didn't want it. And that's that. Now, McCracken didn't want the Ruiz fight. He were unhappy about that. And Eddie Hearn took the flack off that. But So you've got to give Joshua credit for taking the Ruiz fight. But they wanted the payday, didn't they? They said it'd be worth it, didn't they, the pay for the payday? Well, we already know what's going to happen, don't we? We already know that when Joshua beats Ruiz, he was like, if Joshua beats Ruiz in the rematch... Yeah. They're going to keep Usyk nice and nice and comfortable away. Yeah. And they're going to they're gonna be making Joshua white, isn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's going to happen, isn't it? And that'll be for June next year. You reckon, yeah? So, so, so who do you think, if Joshua beats Ruiz, who do you think he's got next? Dillian White. Dillian White. And if he... Losers to Ruiz, or has he got next? I thought it didn't work because I think the WBC will suspend him. Yeah. Do you think if he loses against Ruiz, the he'll fight Dillian White and he'll say, and Eddie will say, yeah, it's not about belts now, it's about fights. I think if he loses to Ruiz, I think he's finished. Do you? Yeah, but will he be bothered after banking seventy? Is it seventy-two million uh, top line before stoppages for both fights? Will Joshua be bothered? He won't be, but it's private jet money, that, isn't it? You there, mate? You there, Dale? Well, we appear to have a technical issue here at the moment. We're trying to get... Ah, Dale the Great, excellent. <laughs> uh, the highest break at the moment is held by Willie Thorne at 142. <laughs> How are you doing, Dale? <laughs> Hello, mate. Um, yeah, go on, yeah, you were saying so, about Femi. So I think that the only reason, the, the main catalyst for the TV companies staying reasonably loyal to Eddie Hearn is driven off the Joshua money. Yeah. Without that, he has not got the same tail. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. just he's just another bear bum in the shower is what Tyson would say. Yeah, yeah. Do you think Tyson Fury is gonna fight again? I think he will, but he won't be anyone of any sort of level. Yeah. He might just have sparring master with uh, his, his bum boy Ch Joseph Parker on on T V. Yeah, but if he's getting 12 million to do wrestling, why does he need to be uh, getting his head punched in in ring? Because if Walling can do that to him, Otto Walling hit him more than any other heavyweights ever hit him. He, he actually hit him. Did he get hit 51 times by Vladimir? And he got hit 121 by Walling or something, 127. So more than double the punches off Vladimir hit him from Walling. So if you're getting that done to you by Walling, what, what, what's Wilder going to do to you? Something has happened to him in that fight, whereby he... Whereby what? Hey there, Dale. You keep losing, you mate. Hey there, Dale.
Hello. Hello, mate. Yeah, I keep losing. I don't know what's going on, mate. Hang on, let me, let me just sit at a different end of... Uh, let me just sit at a different end of the bedroom here. Yeah, go on, mate. Sorry, you were saying. So, I think Tyson's took a beating. Yeah. And he's just thought, me cash out. Yeah, that's what I think. I think... I mean, I, I've got a soft spot for Tyson Fury. My kid's mum, my kid's mum likes him, and my kids do. But this is how I look at it. You can't come back, right, and say all this and do all this. I know it's, a, I know boxing's about hype and that, but you can't mislead us and do and do what he's done. But yet, the other, the the, the flip side to the coin is. When Ty, I, I mean, I got to know Tyson uh, quite well actually after the after he fought Vladimir. And I were going down there all the time, and you know, he, he, and he, he were he were going down there to Peter's gym to help with sparring and stuff like that. And you know, he, he asked me uh, about doing evenings with if I could get him on at uh, Ellaby, and I think Asif were doing some with him, Asif Valley, and you know, he was at a lost end, and he'd put a bit of weight on and. He looked down at dumps and that, and I really felt for Tyson Fury then. I really felt for him. So as far as I'm concerned, he don't fucking box. He don't owe boxing fuck all how he was treated. Because we had a kid there, right, 27 year old. They went and beat Vladimir, and they treat him like shit, didn't they, public? Now he's created this story. I, I don't. I just don't believe the story that's been created. I don't. I don't believe it. And I have a problem with that. I'd rather him just own up and say, do you know what? I fucking took cocaine and I fucked up. And and I'd be happy with that. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable with all the rest of bullshit around it. And saying they're going to do this and do that. And then they're wheeling out Otto fucking Wallin and Tom Swartz. And that doesn't sit well for me. Not when Sugar Ray Leonard can come back and fight who we were fighting. That he doesn't sit well for me and walking off into the sunset with millions. Yes, he doesn't owe boxing for call. And I like to see people do well, but if you say anything nowadays, you're a hater or you're bitter or blah de blah, blah. But I'm only saying on this channel what people in the boxing industry are saying. But people in the boxing industry who've got laminates, when I say laminate, I mean a manager's license, even fighters. Right, who've got laminates, a trainer's license, a promoter's license, a cut man. These same people are all saying things to me, right, on a daily basis. And I'm not going to say that all they are. And um, they say what they say to me. Yeah, people can say they're giving you bullets to fire, and and many a time, you know, sometimes when phone rings and it's Dennis and it's middle at night, I think, oh God, what have I done here? What have I said? But I'm just me. I'm always going to be me. I'm not going to be arse licking. Look, you, you, you've met, you've been to see me. You've spent time with me. I don't need views on YouTube, do I, Dale? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So, but, but you have sometimes in life you have to be legit. So, for me to have this channel is brilliant. For me to be around Dennis with boxing, it's fantastic. And he's one of my best mates as well. So I'm 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 having the time of my life. This is a dream to me, but I I just will not listen to bullshit. Not when I've spent a lot of time and 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 helped out with with. Uh, I'd, I I wouldn't say I were an advisor for Carl Froch from 2004, 2005, but. I spoke with him on a regular basis for nine years in his boxing career and took maybe ten years nearly. And let me tell you this, when I saw what he put himself through and he'd say things like, Porky, I'm going to change boxing, I'm going to fight hard fight after hard fight and everybody's going to follow. And I've seen that and then I've seen what Clinton Woods uh, went through, but only on the TV because I didn't know Clinton then, and I've actually got to know Clinton recently. You know, in the last five years, I seen what they can go through, and then I see guys now pinching livings in boxing, and I think, what the fuck is going on? And I'm going to say my bit, and I know there's boxing managers out there that are saying, "Go on, Russ, well fucking said." Because I wish I could say, because they've got to get a living out of boxing, aren't they? I'm in a fortunate position that. I don't really give two fucks. 
I don't get two fucks for boxing at the moment. I love it, but as regards getting a living out of it, it ain't never gonna happen. So I'm gonna have my fucking say. If people don't like it, come and fucking see me. You know where I am four times a year, for starters. Come and see me. Get in your cars, drive 100 mile, 50 mile, or whatever. If it means that much to you, instead of sending me shit on dodgy accounts, come and see me at a show and say I didn't like what you said and we'll fucking talk and I'll get the camera out. But I'm not going to sit back and watch boxing be abused by fucking KSI, Logan Paul. What about all these kids in these gyms around the country? What about Dempsey Whale? He's starting out on his path, isn't he? Josh Wales trying to get a back end of his career. What about them kids? What about them? Eh? What about uh, Anthony Tomlinson, 10 and 0? What does he think about it? Busting his guts every day, turning his life around. What about them kids? Eh? 10 and 0 kid did who's just got an IBO Continental belt. He's trying to make his mark. They got these shit houses coming and getting pay per view. It's fucking wrong. And you've got people's. It, it just winds me up. I could go on all day about it. What about Clinton Woods? He never got a pay per view. What about Carl Frotch? He only got three pay per views. But you can pick 14 top fights on his CV. It's fucking wrong. It's wrong, mate. Do you agree? I mean, what about Eddie Earn? He's just fucking laughing. Eddie, what do you think about all... What did that guy ask him? He says, oh, Eddie, uh, what do you think about all the criticism that you're getting about KSI? And... Uh Good. Battery's not going to go, is it? Go, get in. Get in there. Two out of two. <laughs> Eddie Earn to and Eddie Earn turned around and said, "It makes me horny." Makes him horny. Uh, and then what, what about Eddie Earn? He only met that kid who died for thirty seconds, didn't he? Now I'm going to leave it with the fans to think about if them tears were genuine because he met Scott Westgarth on more than one occasion, right? And Scott Westgarth died. We never had a tear off Eddie then, did we? He met that kid for 30 seconds and he put him on one of his shows. He's a little Bella fighter. No to do him at room. And then Eddie got all that PR. Eddie's a nice guy in America and all that. Listen, I'm going to leave it to people's opinions. Were they genuine tears or were they genuinely, genuinely upset? Because 
I know what people in the industry are saying, but then again, they're not going to say anything, are they? But only Eddie Hearn knows, but when you've told that many lies, you can end up like the book, the kid who cried wolf, can't you, Dale? Do you know what I mean? Eddie Hills, the heavyweight 4-0 amateur. What a load of bollocks! Eddie Hills, the 4-0 amateur. What a load of knackers! Do you know what I mean? What, what, what's he going to tell us next? I mean, what next, Coogan? Why isn't Coogan Cassius pulling him? I mean, I've met Coogan Cassius several times. I, I, I spent a bit of time with him in Bulgaria in a nightclub. Me, uh, Mark Ramsden, Dennis's school friend, uh, Celia, that lawyer bird, and, and Coogan were all sat there in this club. Coogan come over, and uh, to be fair to him, but he were more bothered about uh, his job and that. He didn't want, he didn't want to get off it like we were, but. Is he going to ask him some proper questions? Is he going to... I mean, I pulled him about this and he was laughing. He says, oh, I don't want you to put me on a billboard, Porky. I said, look, Coogan, that was just a bit of fucking fun that we had here. I said, but when you're going to ask him proper questions now, I'm not going to say what he actually said because I don't think that's fair to him. But I do quite like him and I think he's very hard working. You've got to give him his respects. He's on the ball. But I just don't think they're asking the proper questions. Rob Tebbett, they're all saying he's the voice of the hardcore fans. Rob Tebbett, you're a prick. You're not a voice of hardcore fans. You're not a fucking hardcore at all. You may swallow box wreck every night, but many times you've had Eddie Hearn it, palm of your hand, and you've not got him for kill. Why don't you ask him about this amateur stuff and why there's no footage? Are you telling me Barry Hearn hasn't got footage of his son's amateur fights? We all fucking production teams he's got around him? Fuck off! I don't believe it. I don't believe it for one minute that they've not got footage of Little Edward in Eddie's first fight as an amateur. And they've not got footage? Fuck off! I'm not having it. I am not having it at all. I'm not having it. I'm not having it. Do you know what I'm looking, do you know what I'm looking at now? My tournament snooker balls that Dennis has bought me for my birthday. Hey? Eh? I'm buzzing. And do you know what? Do you know what name it says on them? Fucking World Snooker. I text him, I says, here, I'm not being funny then, but Barry Hearn fucking, you actually bought these off Barry Hearn. Of Barry Hearn's company, I'm devastated, but they're good. So, but, but now I'm, uh, I'm pissed off, mate. I'm always pissed off with boxing, aren't I? I just don't fucking put up with any shit. You know what I mean? And I went to see I went to see Frotch the other day, right, at Ramsdale uh, Golf Place. So it's just round the corner from where he, where his kids are in private school. So I went and seen him there for about just under an hour. And uh, he's mellowed so much. Do you know what I mean? He's mellowed. He even picked tab up in uh, for, for coffees and whatnot. He picked tab up. And he's mellowed so much, but he's he's not as regimented as he were. And, and, and I know what he went through to be a boxer and people can say, oh Porky, you always hark back to Carl Frotch, don't you? Yeah, I do hark back to Carl Frotch because I studied his career and I studied everybody around him. And I gave him as much information to help him as I could about his opponents and all that. And do you know what? He, he's been grateful for that. And it was nice to see him over there because I've not seen him for a bit. I see more of his mum than I do him. But, and to see... And, he, and Carl never mentioned about pay-per-view and how ungrateful. Uh, or, or, so he never mentioned pay-per-view and he never mentioned how fighters today are getting it too easy and that. He just was just happy with how his career ended up, a bit like Clinton Woods. He's just very happy. But I always think, do you know what? He had three pay-per-views and I look now and I see all these people who were dining out on pay-per-views and I just think it's wrong, Dale. I just think it's just totally and utterly wrong, mate. I just, I'm just not happy with it at all. Well, you have to think that back in the day, pay-per-views used to be burned, mate. Used to fight, you know, fight tough fights, and your strikes, and you get your big fight, you get your pay-per-view night. Yeah. Even, even fighters like, to be honest, to be fair to the bloke, David Day, he went to the strikes before he got his first pay-per-view. David Day. Listen, let me tell you this, right? You know, David A, he's a fucking prick. He's a fucking prick, David A. Do you know what he said in Vegas, that prick? He was sat with Schaefer and them, and Dennis and them were sat behind. Uh, uh, it was a Frampton fight, and he said, uh, 
You see him over there? That's Dennis Hobson. He had me fighting in a leisure centre. He said that to fucking Schaefer. So Dennis fucking piped up. He says, go tell him, right? Go tell him that he couldn't sell a fucking ticket. Some people are just ungrateful, aren't they? David A couldn't sell a ticket when Dennis had him. Couldn't sell a ticket. Cost him fortune, Dennis and Maloney. But he was the real deal. He looked a million dollars and that. And Dennis told him, don't fight Carl Thompson, you'll get knocked out. He said, you're our promoter. Your promoter, make it work. Adam Boven him said. So that's what happened. And what happened? He got knocked out. You can't beat wisdom, can you? But it's boxing, isn't it? He's pushing Chisora for Usek fight now, isn't he, for pay-per-view in March. Chisora will fight Parker. Yeah, well, they're saying that Chisora's going to fight Usek in March now. Usek or Parker. Either way, Chisora's got a pay-per-view at the O2 next March. That's the word I've had today off somebody who works at... That's off somebody... Listen to me. I'm, this is an exclusive list. That is off somebody who works at Sky and it's not Carl Froch. Otherwise, I'd say if it were Carl Froch... It's not off Carl Froch, it's off somebody who works at Sky. It's going to be Usek, right, or Parker. No, it ain't Spencer Fearham. <laughs> although, we have, although, he, although he did ring me. It's not off Usek. He's all right, Spencer, actually. I've got a soft spot for him now. It's off Usek or Parker. Sorry, it's, it's Usek or Parker if he beats Price. And that's March pay-per-view. And that's an exclusive from the pig. So, but it does does Jizora deserve it? Well, he's got nine losses. He's got nine losses. Davy Day is going to be pushing him, isn't he, more than ever. I mean, he's even taking a hands-on approach. Because Davy Day's going to need a meal ticket now, isn't he? Now he's finished. Do you know what I mean? But can you imagine them all sat there helping Del Boy, Bell you and Davy Day all helping him, but yet... The other month, they were all hating each other, weren't they, when Bellew fought Hay? Unbelievable. Hey? Unbelievable. It's unreal what's going on, isn't it? And these people are getting away with it! They're getting away with it! Do you know what I mean? It's literally, when's this pay-per-view going to end? They when what? They're squeezing out. They're ragging every last ounce out of it now, isn't they? Yeah, they are, mate. It's not good, is it? Chisora! Price! Price! Who is Price's best win? David Price's best win is Audley Harrison seven years ago. Fraudly! Right. I'm going to go anyway, mate. It's great to check. Let me just check if we, we've just covered everything. Let me have a look. Uh, say, Nigel Ben, we covered that, didn't we? Yeah. Last we time, didn't we? Yeah. We covered that last time, didn't we? That's about it, really. Uh, all right then, Dale. Well, listen. All the best to you and your missus in your new fancy house. I hope you're well. And you, mate. Now you have to come and see me again. All right. Well done. You take care. Yeah. Peace out, mate. Cheers. Ciao. Mate. That was uh, my good friend Dale Nichols uh, from the black country. I don't mean full of black people, I mean down in the west country. Uh, an area where uh, that I know very well because I used to be in jail down there in Blunderston. A proper blunder there, didn't I? I think there'd be Hydra in there when I were in there as well. So, yeah, he's all right, Dale. He knows his boxing. Uh, it's a shame he's a Wolves fan. Uh, Steve Paul's the best striker in world football. But, uh, yeah, he's all right. Uh, come on, Rocky, you're allowed back in now. I've finished. Uh, yeah, he's all right, Dale. I like him a lot. He's hardcore. And that's all we want on here, hardcore. But like I've said before, and I will say it again, if anybody's got a problem, don't chat shit on your stupid YouTube tweets or texts. Come and see me. Alright, come and see me. Don't chat shit. Come and see me. And I'll have you on the channel. Or send me your phone number in an email and what I'll do, I'll phone you up and we'll get you on the channel and you can tell me what you're unhappy about. Alright, it's only boxing. Don't lose your shit over it. <laughs> Do not lose your shite over it, it's boxing. 
We don't suffer fools gladly on Porky's Corner, we tell it straight, alright? We only want genuine people around us. Genuine people, alright? Now I'm going to be at a show on the 23rd at Mick Wales Gym. I'm going to be filming the show there, 23rd of October. Anyone who wants to come and see me, it's in Mexborough, it's at the Empress, it's opposite Tommy's Bar. Come and see me, don't chat shit, don't embarrass yourselves on social media, come see me. I am approachable, I'm, I'm transparent, alright, but like I said, don't come and see me and chat shit about could, coulda, woulda, shoulda, or gonna do this, gonna do that, fucking hell. Gonna do wonders, but all you do is shit cucumbers, alright, you're talking to a man here who's been in Nick 10 years, over 12 years, so I've seen it and done it, all right, I've heard every story that you can imagine, I've met more Porsche dra I've met more Porsche owners in jail than you've ever heard, I've met all the so-called hard men, it's all knackers, it's all a load of knackers, but at the end of the day, it's boxing and it? it's a sport we love, but we're going to root out the knackers like we did at the beginning, I'm just sick of fucking hearing shit, utter shit, Fucking loads of knackers. Sick of hearing it. And like I said, we're going to root them out from now on. So, and I'm also going to be wickling it down to. I'm going to invite three people or four people onto a live podcast that I'm looking at doing. Uh, I'm just in the middle of. Uh, probably going to be in the middle of moving offices soon. I've still got my office, but I might be moving soon. So I'm going to be looking to add somebody, for, there's going to be Dale on it with me, me and Dale, probably going to be my pal Paul from Barnsley if he wants to come on, he's, he, he, the offer's there for him if he's interested as a contributor or a pundit, whatever you want to call it, and Lee from Birkenhead, he's a good boxing guy. So there might be a place for one or two more people. Obviously, I'd like to get Ozzy on and Smido, people like that. Smido's been a contributor on here, but I don't know what Smido's situation is because he's a busy kid. So, but he's more than welcome to come on. And Terry and Rico are welcome, but they do their own thing. They don't like to step on people's toes, but they're all welcome. Even Steffi Bull, the ginger winger, he's, uh, he's welcome on. You know, if he wants to come on, he can. But he's gonna have to fight me soon. No, you, Steffi. You're gonna have to have a straightener with me. Probably on 29th of November, because uh, I've heard you might be going to the show, Steffi, so that'd be interesting. So it's all gonna be going off on the 29th. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. And. Uh, Shout out to Innovation Alloys, Steve Crump, JJ Crump and Son, South Yorkshire Packaging and Climate Cool. Alright, you've now got 30, 60, 70, you've got about 75 minutes here. I'm going to mix it up with a few snooker shots for you, just because I'm a bit of a show off, aren't I? And uh, do you know what I mean? I just like to show off showing out all my pots that I put on. I don't put any misses on though, do I? Because they look a dick then, wouldn't I? But it is what it is, so peace out, keep on trucking. Don't forget to listen to Highfield Boxing on Twitter. Don't forget to read at Lee Wright's articles that he does. I think he's got a podcast as well, Rico. Don't forget to listen to Boxing Asylum. And don't forget to follow my good friend, Tommy the Guru Allen on Twitter. He's a good boxing man as well. Ah, oh, he's the other guy who's, I'm going to do, be doing something with on here as well. He's, I, I, his opinion I like a lot. I like Brian King's opinion as well. I think he's uh, got a good uh, a good boxing voice. But it's a shame that I can't have that Cy Clayton on, isn't it? It's a shame, isn't it, Cy Clayton, that we can't have you on, isn't it? So you're just going to have to be one of them people on social media running 20 accounts, aren't you? Because you've been pushed out of Boxing Circle. <laughs> I don't know, anyway, shout out to Terry Chapman, I hope you're well, shout out Ozzy Smith, Smido, Steve Wellings, all the rest of the gang, peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing, Boyaka!
What about that one then, Rico? Do you like that one? Keep on trucking, son. This shot here is for Raymond O, my friend in Hartlepool. How you doing Ray? I hope you're well. I hope you're well Raymond O. Stop partying and be a good boy. Alright? Make your missus proud of you. Cut that Saturday night stuff out. Look at that, why it nearly dropped in, but it never did. <laughs> 